Romans chapter 10. Brethren, talking to Christians, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. We picked this up in chapter 9. Paul has a love for his brethren, the Jews. And with that love, he's going to spell the truth. They're not all saved. They need the same Christ. For I bear them record, the Jews, that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. Man, they love God. They, they're doing everything for God. Man, they're killing Christians because the, the law says you're to kill them because they're preaching another, another God. They're going to the temple. They're bringing their offerings. They're making laws. They're, they're trying to please God by their works, and that's not a pleasing God. They will not do what God wants them to do. They are doing it their own way. They have a zeal, but the zeal is wrong. You can have a perfect zeal and be it perfectly wrong. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness. Now that's the Lord Jesus Christ. We know that. They don't know Jesus. And anybody who does not know Jesus in the eyes of God are ignorant. Oh, you're calling me? No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying what the Bible says. My righteousness is Jesus Christ's righteousness because I have no righteousness at all. I know about God. I know his word. I'm yet more to learn. But I know one thing. I know what God expected me to do to get saved, and I believe. And going about to establish their own righteousness. So there's God's righteousness and there's your own righteousness. Your own righteousness will not get you to heaven. You've got to have God's righteousness. Have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. So see, they have not done what God has told them to do. And we'll see by the end of this chapter what it is. Ready for Christ? In reference to righteousness for Christ is the end of the law of for righteousness. All right, the Jews, they want to get right? It's no more the law. The law cannot make them right. It has to be Christ. To everyone that believeth. And if they don't have Christ as their righteousness, they got their own righteousness, not approved of God. For Moses described the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. You got to do it all. You got to live it all if you want the law. There's no loopholes. You want the law? All the law, complete law, 100% of whatever you guys say, every letter. Of that law you've got to live in. They're not. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise Say not in thy heart, who shall ascend into heaven? Who, who will go up? Who's going to go up there for me? That is to bring Christ down from above. Jesus Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father. Who's going to bring him down? Well, the church says they bring him down when they put him into the bread and wine. Salvation is not by your works. It is done by Jesus Christ. You can't go to heaven. Christ is going into heaven. Or who shall descend into the deep? That is to bring up Christ again from the dead. Are you going to resurrect Christ? Are you going to step down the deep of this earth into the hell? You step down the deep of this earth into hell, you'll stay there. For no one's salvation, including not yours. But what say is it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. So again, when you're active with a ministry, 
And they're searching their religions. They're searching their hope. They're searching what they can do. And they hear you with the word. Everything they establish for their own righteousness is void. How zeal they are to go to church. How zeal they are to be baptized. How zeal they are to do. And yet when we preach Christ, it's on their mouth. It's in their heart. The seed. They are without excuse. After hearing a man preach the gospel of the, of the Lord Jesus Christ and the righteousness of Jesus Christ, he can no longer turn to that religion and, and faithfully attend to that religion, saying, I'm doing God right, when God said, no, you're not. That's why Catholics are so mad, because the Bible says you're wrong. I know, and I grew up as a Catholic. I grew up with a Catholic family. This Bible condemns you and you're angry because you want a zeal for God and God says, I'm not taking it. And when you hear the word, what are you going to do for salvation that Christ has already done for you? So what say that the word? Salvation needs the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and thy heart. That is the word of faith which Paul preached. You better have the same gospel that Paul preached and Timothy and Apollos for salvation. You stepped anything other than that, add, subtract, or footnote it, you ain't got the word. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. You got to open your mouth. I'm reading to you black and white. Romans chapter 10 verse 9. Salvation consists of you opening your mouth. And shall believe in thy heart. Confession and belief. Lord God, I'm a vile sinner, and I know in my heart it's just a wicked thing that God has raised him from the dead. Uh oh, one thing for salvation, you got to teach that Christ came up from the dead. Paul's going to speak to the Corinthian church later when we get there to study. There are people saying the church, that the resurrection is already passed, there was no resurrection. A man that has to be saved needs the word, needs the heart, he needs his mouth, he needs to believe, he needs to believe in the resurrection. Thou shalt be saved. You talk to somebody and say, oh, I'm a Christian. What do you think about the resurrection of Jesus Christ? What about your mouth? Why aren't you confessing Jesus? I've got my own way. That's not good enough. That's not what Christ... Christ didn't say do it your own way. Christ said open up your big mouth. Establish your heart. What the Bible says. I don't care what you say. I care what God says. For with the heart... Man believeth unto righteousness. I thought it was water. I thought it was attendance. I thought it was money. I thought it was my parents. I thought it was the church I was in. Wrong. Your heart. That wicked, vile heart that Jeremiah says is just gross and wicked. That wicked heart that confesses all the sins that Jesus said. Adultery, fornications, lies, theft. That wicked heart must believe on righteousness. What's been a righteousness since chapter 1? Uh, verse 1. Of this chapter it's been Christ's righteousness not your own you can't believe in yourself say oh I follow my heart I believe in me words of hell and you got somebody who say oh believe in yourself and just trust your heart you need to drop them as your friend you need to get rid of them because that goes against the Bible he says for with the heart man believes on the righteousness that heart of yours ought to believe righteousness, that's Jesus Christ. Connect that with Jesus. Righteousness, Jesus, Jesus, righteousness. That has to come from your heart. Don't you dare trust your heart. And with the mouth, again, 
Confessions made unto salvation. April 1987, my grandmother's uh, uh, house, Waterford, Connecticut, at her coffee table with Joe Caswell with an open Bible. I asked Jesus Christ to save my soul. I believe he saved my soul. I'm signed, sealed, delivered, and ready to go home. I am not afraid. I can't say no to the people. I was this. I remember doing that. That's not salvation. That's not professing. Oh, if you had a good time at Six Flags, you, you would definitely boast of that. If you went out on a, on a trip or a vacation, you'd definitely show all the pictures, but you can't speak up for Jesus Christ. Shame on you. Shame. Oh, we're going to read about shame. And where the scripture says, Whosoever believes on him shall not be ashamed. I can't speak. You not be ashamed. Whosoever believes on him. I just gave you an excuse of wrong into the garbage can. For there is no difference between the Jew, chapter 9 and verse 10, I mean chapter 9 and chapter 10. Paul has been stating, man, I love my brother, I want them to get saved, and the Greek. There are three classes of people in this world. There's Jews, there's Gentiles, and there's saved people. That's it. Paul has a love for the Gentiles, yes. But man, he wants his people, he wants them to be saved. For the same Lord over all, Jew and Greek, all is rich unto all that call. Man, my God has, has, a, has a reserve that beat the reserve of America. He can give you food, water, air, money, anything. He has an unlimited supply of at his voice for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord Mary's not the name of the Lord Allah is not the name of the Lord Moroni is not the name of the Lord your favorite pastor is not the name of the Lord you are not the name of the Lord for whosoever, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. When it comes from the heart, it comes from the mouth. You call on that Lord, you believe, it's the word, you're saved. I care if you're Jew, I don't care if you're Greek. Now you're a Christian. Now we got a problem. We're talking about a big mouth. Been talking about the mouth. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? If they don't get the word, how are they going to believe on God? Why are you doing this? Why are you not getting my door? Why are you doing this here? Why are you leaving that piece of paper? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Keep it in church on Sunday morning. It doesn't say anything about Sunday morning. It says you need a preacher. You need a man with a big mouth whose heart has believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. And say you need him to go out there and tell you exactly what happened to him. Salvation. You're a witness. You're saved, you go out there and you tell a lost and dying world what happened to you. That's what you do. You get out there and preach the word. Now you see the cycle here? They hear the word, they believe with their heart, they confess with their mouth. Then they go and tell others. And he, they tell them with their mouth and with their heart. And they believe and they confess by hearing the word and going in their heart and telling others. It's supposed to be a cycle, a loop. How shall you hear without a preacher? I don't know what the Lord's plans are. Whether rapture or death of me. Or he moves me. He said, okay, I'm done. I got somewhere else for you to go. Either one of those three things. Upon my absence at the Daytona Beach, there'll be a spot there where, you know what, they won't hear a preacher no more. 
They won't hear the word. They will not see a man holding the Bible, opening the Bible, and reading from the scriptures about Jesus Christ. So, if God were to remove me from that ministry and not replace it with anybody else, how on earth will those people know what to do to be saved? With the present church atmosphere it is today. The church ain't out telling people of Jesus. I was 18 years old before I saw a gospel track. Never had a Baptist come to my door and tell me or my family about Jesus. You got to go tell them. It didn't say let your light shine, let your work shine, let your Christian character shine. It said open that big mouth and preach. Women not supposed to preach. Mary went back and told the, told the disciples, I spoke to angels and they said he's risen from the dead. That's preaching. That's telling what happened. How shall they preach? Uh-oh. Except they be sent. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. Peace, peace, where's peace, where's peace, where's peace? I'm preaching it to you every week, you say. Out of your own mouth, you proclaim I preach every Saturday, and I give you the peace. Preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. You know what gospel is? It means good news. I heard a girl today, grew up, in a, grew up in a Baptist home, went to uh, a Baptist church, went to youth rep, and she had no idea what the gospel is. Shame on you, youth leader. Shame on you, pastor. If an eight-year-old, nine-year-old, ten-year-old does not know what the gospel is in your church, you failed. I'm not saying that. God said, you got to go out there with the gospel, not Tutti Fruities, not candy, not games. You preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings, a good good thing. We got glad tidings. We're gonna have a car war. We got glad tidings. We're gonna have a picnic. We got glad tidings. We're gonna have a fellowship. We got glad tidings. We're gonna have a boat trip. We got glad tidings. Ain't got no gospel. That's what America's like today, and it's seen overseas. But they have not obeyed the gospel. Now Paul is going right back to the Jews. Man, he's telling you how to get saved, but the main reference of 9 and 10 is those Jews. And 11. They have not obeyed the gospel. For Elias says, Lord, who has believed our report? Isaiah 53, 1. Isaiah 53, 1 is the start of the crucifixion the torture, the Jesus being abused by man, Isaiah 53. And Paul says in reference with those Jews who has believed our report. So then cometh, so then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by a Christian CD. By a, cantata, a cant Christmas cantata. By a Christian movie. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I will say King James 16, 11. I'll nail that one down. Other Bibles take the blood out. How can you be saved without the blood? According to other Bibles, the Ethiopian Nuke would go to hell because he did not ever profess Jesus is God. Jesus is his Savior. He just went and got dunked in the water. What other Bibles say? My Bible says he believed. My Bible says blood. My Bible says all on all 100% Jesus Christ. 
There's probably a lot of people are going to be shocked at the Great White Throne Judgment thinking they're saved, and they're not. The word, the word, the mouth, the heart, the word, the mouth, hearing, hearing, hearing. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily, their sound went into all the earth, and their words unto the ends of the world. Direction. But I said, did not Israel know? First Moses says, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people, Gentiles. And by a foolish nation, I will anger you. I'm going to save those Gentiles just to spite you guys. <laughs> There's your loving God. Okay, you're my people, Israel. Abraham, Isaac, you're, you're my people. You have so disobeyed me. You know those skunks? You know those dead dogs that you hate? Jonah, Peter. Well, guess what I'm going to do? In spite of you, I'm going to save them. And they're going to call on your Messiah for salvation. Now, that's not going to be a kick in the butt. Imagine a Jew from the time that Jesus Christ arose from the grave and ascended up to the Father, Acts chapter 1, to today. Imagine every Jew that rejects Jesus Christ that will be cast off in the lake of fire. And here I am as a dead dog. Here's my wife as a dead dog. Here's my daughter as a dead dog. Be able to say to those Jews, I believe in your Messiah. What's your problem? And the word, the word, the law was given to you guys, not us. I can read Isaiah 53 and see the Lord Jesus Christ. What's wrong with you guys? And you call us heathen? You had God speak to you. God never ever. I never heard the audibility of God's voice. I have never seen God speak in lightning. I have never seen God's fire. And besides that, with the nation of Israel, I still believed on God. I still love God. I put my faith in Him. What about you Jews? It would be even worse so for a Jew who does get saved and gets right with God. Imagine him going back to his family and all that. Hey, I believe the Messiah. I wish you would have. But Elias is very bold. Very bold. And says, I was found of them that sought me not. Me. I was manifest unto them that asked not after me. Gentiles. Remember when Jesus started speaking? He said, when Naaman the Syrian, that woman that, that uh, Elijah helped with the oil. Those are Gentile people. Rahab, and then you got uh, the Queen of Sheba. All those people. That, you know what Jesus was telling them? Listen, you guys are out. These Gentiles are coming. Paul is having the same message Jesus preached. I, I very assume that Paul was there listening to Jesus. He just doesn't mention the names like Jesus did. But to Israel, they are God's people. They're just angered God right now. And today, they don't believe that Messiah, they will burn in hell. They will go in a lake of fire. But Israel, as corporate, all day long has I stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. That is the testimony true of the nation corporate Israel today. But I know Jews that are saved. I know quite a few of them. And they love the Lord and are doing right. I got one right now. If I ever got trouble on the street, I can call his phone. I got my I got my speed dial, and he'll be glad to help me out if I did something innocently in trouble. But as far as the nation itself, they're disobedient, <coughs> and they want money. And they want more money, 
And with saying that right there, we're going to get into Israel again in the next chapter, Lord. Well, Paul's saying they got to be saved. they got to get right. They need Christ as their righteousness. I love them. I don't want to go to hell. And the problem with they're disobedient. That's their problem, disobedient. Why will a man go to hell? Because he disobeyed the righteousness of God. It's simple. That's all it is. I will not trust Christ. Whatever reason. Whatever reason, I won't trust God in his word. That's a shame. 